Good evening and a very warm welcome. My name is Kathy Thompson, president of the Red Clay School District Board of Education. The board is thankful you have come out tonight and grateful to have you here. We're also happy to have the end of the 2020-2021 school year. Thank you all for helping so much with our Red Clay students. Though it's been a very tough year for everyone, we appreciate and thank each and every one of our staff, educators, custodians, everybody, administrators, everybody, for all the hard work that's done to help our Red Clay kids continue to grow. The June 16, 2021 board meeting of the Red Clay School District is called to order. It is 7.04 p.m. This meeting is being held electronically. On, as, as everybody knows, because we've said it for the past 15 months, Governor Carney issued a state of emergency on March 12, 2020 that allowed, that there was a declaration of a state of emergency for the state of Delaware due to a public health threat. The state of emergency allows us to continue, allows executive bodies, including boards of education, to hold meetings electronically, either by means of telephone conference or video conference call or a combination thereof. We're holding this meeting as a hybrid meeting as we've done for the past several, so people can access the meeting remotely via Zoom or in person at Cab Calloway School of the Arts. We've been doing this for a number of years, we, a number of months now. We continue to learn everything and we're thankful that you're here. The information regarding this meeting, including information on how to access the meeting in person and or electronically was published on June 9, 2021 on the Red Clay School District website under the notice inspection. Individuals may participate in this meeting either via Zoom conferencing or in person by, and, and may speak by completing the public comment form that's available and submitting it at least one half hour prior to the start of the meeting. If electronic, in order to speak, you must have provided a complete Zoom name and it must match, what's on your screen must match what's on the public comment form. Um, if for some reason you've signed up as a speaker electronically and you're present but not called on, please let us know, raise your hand in the Zoom app and our very helpful staff will, will assist you. As a courtesy to others and to prevent unnecessary disruption, all devices are muted unless and until a person is recognized to speak. School board members appearing in person have active mics. Those at elect accessing it electronically have their mics activated when they text us and indicate they wanna speak and or during votes in order to alleviate feedback, which we've encountered before. Um, school board members are both in-person and, and remote electronically, and to maximize the effectiveness and order, orderliness of this meeting, we'll have a roll call vote for each item to be voted on, and we ask each board member to identify themselves by name prior to speaking. The meeting is being recorded electronically. And I have to say, the, the astute observer will notice that we are recognizing Dr. Faith Newton at her last meeting and thanking her for all of her work on the Red Clay for Red Clay, 10 years as a board member, and I believe 17 as an educator and or administrator within Red Clay. She's touched many lives and we're very thankful for your service. I know that I will miss her um, knowledge of Red Clay, her candor and her friendship. So thank you. Yep, ready to do the Pledge of Allegiance. First item is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And Madam President, before we um, officially begin this board meeting, um, we want to take an opportunity, a moment, um, to recognize and have a moment of silence for a young lady who um, has recently passed away in our district. Uh, Leah Wall, who was a Conrad 10th grade student, um, unfortunately passed away on April 30th, 2021. Leah was an honor student where she was a member of the physical therapy and athletic health care pathway. She played volleyball, participated in the drama club with her friends. Everyone who knew her described her as a kind soul who loved people for who they were. When her friends were feeling down, Leah would reach out to them, letting them know they were beautiful and loved. She will be greatly missed by the students and staff at Conrad and Red Clay School District as a whole. She had a wonderful sense of humor and liked to make people smile. An avid animal lover, she volunteered at Faithful Friends Animal Society and ran in their annual 5K. Leah enjoyed watching and analyzing Flyers games uh, with her dad and memorized every Family Guy episode 
which uh, they will watch together. She liked shopping, baking, going to concerts, and listening to indie music on vinyl with her mom. She especially liked spending time and making funny videos of her sister, Kira. She loved watching Harry Potter movies, especially number four with her brother, Corey, enjoyed talking about the book series with her soon-to-be sister-in-law, Bethany, and liked playing with her nephew, Dexter. She had recently gotten her driver's license and was proud to check off um, as an organ donor, the organ donor box. And so uh, Leah will be missed and to the Wall family. Again, we um, pour out our heartfelt sympathies um, to the unfortunate, untimely death of Leah. And as a district, we just wanna honor Leah with a moment of silence. So if we could have a brief moment of silence. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so now we move on to the student staff community recognitions and public comment. So first up, we recognize Taylor Green for approval of the minutes. Oh, oops, no. agenda. Okay, I, I jumped ahead. Now I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Ms. Sabo moved. Is there a second? Second. Dr. Newton, second. Any discussion? Okay, Maria, roll call vote, please. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Oh. Mr. Wilson? Yes. <laughs> Unanimous vote, motion carries. So now we recognize Ms. Taylor Green for the Yay Red Clay 2020-2021 Awards and Achievements. Ms. Taylor Electronics. Okay, good evening. Can everyone hear me? Okay, good evening and thank you, President Thompson. I can barely hear you, Taylor. Oh. Taylor, you there? I'm there. Can you hear me? Yes. Much better. Thank you. Okay. Well, good evening and thank you, President Thompson. Tonight, as we close out the 2021 school year, we wanted to take a few moments to shout out some awards and achievements that our schools earned this year. First up, William Cook Elementary School was named a 2021 Special Olympics Unified Champion School. Special thanks to faculty advisor, Heather Kennedy. In the Odyssey of the Mind competition, Team Martin placed first in the virtual state tournament and went to virtual awards and in Science Olympiad, Cook students medaled in every event. With leadership from staff member Marisol Ocasio, Baltz Elementary School came together for a Baltz Bears Care Community Service Project in which the whole school collected supplies for local animal shelters. And at North Star Elementary School, Ansh Modi and Jai Modi were the state math calendar competition winners. Emily Zhu won the national Once Upon a Dream poetry contest and Taryn Rodolski won the Arbor Day poster contest. At Highlands Elementary School, first grade teacher Linda Carpenter and paraprofessional Noreen Seth earned special recognition from the Compassionate Schools Program for their commitment to fostering the development of the whole child so that all students can thrive. Linden, Ele Linden Hill Elementary School obtained 443 online pledges in the Newcastle County Great Schools Clean Streams Challenge, more than any other school of their size. In addition, Linden Hills Girls on the Run team completed a 5K and two students had their writing published in the Newcastle County Pages Literary and Arts Magazine. Evan G. Shortledge Academy was the first runner up for the Delaware Department of Education's Compassionate Champion Award. Ritchie Elementary School won an Exxon Grant and the Gardening Know-How Award. And at Richardson Park Elementary School, Lori Jorsky won the Helen H. Bennett Scholarship. Skyline Middle School art teacher, Sierra Hackett, won the Jostens Program of Excellence Award for Outstanding Yearbook Design. 
Alexis I. DuPont Middle School's Nasira Sherman won the Judge's Choice Award in the 2021 Newcastle County Project Soapbox Spring Maid Stage event. Don Jackson and AI's STEM students were accepted into the Amazon Future Engineers program. Conrad Schools of Science was recognized by the state of Delaware as a world language proficient, proficiency champion school. Conrad's Prishna Patel won the Trauma Awareness Month art contest and Team 55 won first place in Science Olympiad, advancing to nationals. Stanton Middle School saw three students win state level awards from the National PTA's Reflections Art Contest, which was focused on the theme, I Matter Because. Milagros Moreno, Bedo Moreno Bedoya won the Award of Excellence, Mariana Amanza Garcia won the Award of Merit, and Michaela Knoll won an earned an honorable mention. And lastly, H.P. DuPont Middle School took first place at the 2021 Science Olympiad competition in several categories, including Reach for the Stars, Ping Pong Parachute, Elastic Launched Glider, Disease Detectives, Circuit Lab, and Anatomy and Physiology. H.P.'s Business Professionals of America students took first place at the BPA State Leadership Conference. Students also took home a number of first place finishes at the Technology Student Association State Conference. So congratulations to all these students and staff members and yay red clay. Fantastic, fantastic awards for our students and our staff. So thank you. Jen. Okay, now we move on to the community, um, the public comment. So again, thank you for coming out to attend tonight's board meeting and sharing your thoughts. Under board policy 2006, the board encourages the staff and community to share concerns concerning school issues and educational programs. Sharing can be done verbally, in writing, and by speaking at the meeting. Under board policy 2006, the board shall provide a time period of up to 30 minutes at each board meeting for public comment, which time may be extended at the board's discretion. Speakers are requested to give a written comment of their copy of their remarks to the superintendent and speakers are limited to a three minute time period. The time will be monitored and you'll be able to see a timer on the screen. Speakers will be unmuted by the red clay team when it's time to speak and when time is up, the mic is muted. So again, thank you very much for coming out and speaking because we do like to hear you. So first up is Mr. Kenneth Hutchins. Welcome, Mr. Hutchins. And we have Mr. Hutchins and Dr. Adrian Peoples as well. And um, Dr. Marshall, I do apologize. You might want to come on down. Um, I called Dr. Marshall and said she had to be at this board meeting as she retired. This is my first, my last act of uh, having her do something uh, against her will, so to speak. So thank you for being here, Dr. Marshall. More importantly, Dr. Peoples and Mr. Hutchins. Superintendent Green. Uh, members of the Red Clay School Board. Uh, we thank you very much for the time and the opportunity to be here today. Uh, in July, 2016, uh, Ken Hutchins and myself established the Delaware Education Data Forum, a group of data professionals passionate about the accuracy, confidence, and consensus of the data being reported uh, on Delaware's uh, public children in the public education system. Uh, it's been my honor to serve in that forum with Dr. Jerry Marshall. Uh, and for two years of this, uh, of the five years we've been together, going into our sixth year in August, uh, it was my esteemed pleasure to be a co-chair with her. Uh, and on the record, I can say that I like working with Dr. Marshall much better than I like working with Jerry. <laughs> um, he can, he can so uh, if you will indulge me, we'd like to present uh, Dr. Marshall with this plaque. Uh, thank you for your support and dedication as an LEA co-chair for the Delaware Education uh, Data Forum from 2018 to 2020. Uh, thank you very much. You will be missed uh, very much so. And thank you very much. And you get three minutes, I get three minutes. Yes, you do. <laughs> yes, you do. Again, Superintendent Green Board members, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to speak today. Um, hmm. 
<laughs> I know. I told her she made me cry. I was going to be mad. <laughs> I've known Jerry for 10 years. Um, we've, uh, it's a small knit community of us data. Uh, Dr. Peebles uses the word uh, professionals. We affectionately refer to ourselves as data nerds. Um, so it's been a pleasure all these years. And as Dr. Peebles said, um, we co-founded it together. We thought it was important to have uh, representation from the state as Dr. Peebles does. And then every two years, a representative from the LEA, since I co-founded it, I, by default, I guess I was chosen after that, that the members got to vote. So obviously they were happy when, when Jerry took the position. And a quick side note, when we were discussing it uh, a couple of weeks ago um, about how things have changed, progressed for the better, we were looking at you know, how we can improve things and not being anything, one of the members said, yeah, Jerry made it much more fun. <laughs> so uh, we, we really, really appreciated everything you did uh, for the forum and, and how you, you know, advanced it to make it more fun and more enjoyable. Um, but one of the awards that you didn't know you were getting was, so the first ever Career Achievement Recognition Award presented to Jerry Marshall for her outstanding commitment and service to the Delaware Data Forum. Best wishes and congratulations on your retirement. And Dr. Peoples and, and Mr. Hutchins, thank you for recognizing Dr. Marshall. Um, and, and we've had the privilege and pleasure of benefiting from her knowledge and expertise. And uh, your skill set will be sorely missed. But congratulations and enjoy those grand days. <laughs> Thanks again, gentlemen. Okay, next is Representative Kim Williams. Uh, welcome, Representative Williams. We're really glad to have you here. And Representative Smith is also, Mike um, Smith is also here. Smith, we're really glad to have you too. <laughs> Thank you for everything you do for us. Good evening, and uh, thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, Representative Williams and I are really here to celebrate uh, Faith Newton. And uh, we, yes, let's pop it up. Yes. Faith is a constituent of mine, and um, very honored to watch uh, her here on the board uh, for uh, the last number of years. I think um, Faith has defined excellence and an ambassadorship and all that she's done for the Red Clay community and for our students and families, as well as teachers and professionals throughout the district. So uh, Faith, I just wanted to personally come and thank you. I actually left a T-ball game early just to make it in time here for you. Um, so I uh, just wanted to say thank you for all you've done for the Red Clay community and uh, looking forward to I'm assuming you're looking forward to less public comment in your future and, and, and more uh, good evening. So, and also, we, uh, Kim and I had a tribute done from the House of Representatives. I, how about you, you say some comments and then you read it? How about that? You sure? Well, I just thought uh, um, I've enjoyed working with you. I don't know if you remember our very first experience at the, yes, okay, <laughs> at the Consolidated Grant. And I remember I was a, a member, of, I was a I guess a parent on the committee and uh, Faith was leading the, the group, the grant discussion. And I remember this, I don't remember who it was, so I won't say, well, I can't remember the name, so I won't disclose, but the person was rather irritated and very rude to uh, Dr. Newton. And she was so professional and just there to really lead, lead us. And I remember that I spoke up and I said, I don't remember my exact words, but it was something like, please don't talk to Dr. Newton like that. Do you remember that? I, oh my gosh, it was just so, I remember it. That was my first time with you. And I just, and I remember how professional you are and working with you on the board and um, just the interaction with your husband and you at Dell State. And um, you have given a lot to the community and we're very proud and I'm very happy that you'll be able to head down to the beach and enjoy it more. 
So thank you for your time here and, and, and thank you for all that you've done for Red Clay and the community, the educators, all the staff and the students, thank you. Just so it's on the record, I'll, I'll read the uh, tribute uh, from the house. Um, but I mainly wanted to, to thank you. I mean, two five-year terms is pretty amazing if you think about it. That's a decade of your life you've given to the Red Clay community. Uh, you know, I was thinking about that earlier today. And uh, you guys put up with a lot. And I want to thank all of you, actually, because you all do uh, what you think is best for the, the students and families in, in Red Clay. And, and you put up with a lot of five years. So. Uh, the state of Delaware House of Representatives tribute be it hereby known to all that the House of Representatives acknowledges Dr. Faith Richards Newton, Red Clay School District School Board member. We proudly recognize this outstanding individual and applaud, applaud her many years of dedicated service to the Red Clay School District community. Dr. Newton began her term in 2011 and has proudly served two five-year terms. She's had an impressive career in education with the Red Clay School District as principal of Stanton Middle School, director of instructional support in the district office, assistant superintendent in instructional support, director of instructional support, manager of the district office and specialist in the district office. Dr. Newton retired in January of 2009. For 10 years, she has served most admirably, giving her time and talents to benefit the board. We commend her remarkable contributions to the Red Clay School District. We bestow our best wishes for successful future endeavors. The House of Representatives extends its sincere congratulations and directs this tribute to be issued on today, the 16th day of June, signed by the Speaker of the House, Pete Schwartzkopf, Chief Clerk Richard Puffer, uh, some guy named Mike Smith, and Representative Kim Williams. Faith, thank you for all you've done for Red Clay. Our next speaker is Miss Yvonne Johnson. Welcome, Miss Johnson. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Good evening, school board and Durrell. I hope you are well. It is my pleasure to be here this evening, well, virtually, to thank and pay tribute to Faith Newton. I have known Faith for many years. I will never forget when she was the principal at Stanton Middle School when my son Ross attended sixth grade there. She handled the situation with professionalism. She moved on to the district office where she headed up the Title I Parent Advisory Committee. I was part of that very first parent group. I was under your leadership, that committee set the tone for the entire state and it is still active today. She then became a district administrator before she retired. We had many meetings at Crossroads restaurants discussing whatever I was advocating for at the time, mostly special education. Faith, remember when we fought to add middle school to Brandywine Springs or work to pass referendums? How about when you supported the families who wanted to keep their dual language program and to delay inclusion until a firm plan was implemented? There were just so many memories that I can think of, but I know that your commitment to the students of Red Clay has been unbelievable. I stayed in touch with Faith over the years, and then 10 years ago, in February of 2011, I called you on the phone and I said, I think you should run for the school board, and you, you would make a remarkable school board member, and you said, Yvonne, you are nuts. We worked hard to get you elected. I remember the night you won like it was yesterday. We were sitting in Tyler's awaiting the results with Beck and Dr. A. Well, the rest is history. Faith went on to win that seat against an incumbent, which brings us to tonight, where she is sitting in her board seat for the last time. Faith has always remained a good friend, colleague, sounding board, and most importantly, a fair and diligent board member. I am thrilled for you and Steve and wish you so much luck in your retirement. 
and in your new life at the beach. Thank you for your dedication to the students, families, and staff and Red Clay. Thank you for always being fair. I know this is not goodbye, but I will see you in Bethany. Thank you so much, Faith. It has been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, next up is Representative Sherry Dorsey Walker. Representative, welcome, Representative Dorsey Walker. Good evening. Good evening. The esteemed members of the board, President Thompson, Superintendent Green, it is my pleasure to say congratulations to a great woman of faith, Dr. Faith Newton. It has been a pleasure and an honor to work with Dr. Newton. And I would like to say a special thank you to Dr. Newton for supporting House Bill 198. We shall actually have the bill signing tomorrow. And that's the bill adding Black history to the state's curriculum. You were unwavering with your support. And I could go on and on and on about all the wonderful things that you have done for the Red Clay families. But do know that I'm included on that resolution or the tribute from the House of Representatives. Know that you are loved, you're appreciated, and thank you for all your hard work. And do not be surprised if I show up at your door at the beach. Many blessings to you. Thank you. And lastly is Mr. Mike Matthews. Welcome, Mr. Matthews. Good evening, everyone. Mike Matthews. I'm a teacher in Red Clay. A few things I wanted to discuss tonight. Um, first, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't let this public comment time go without thanking Faith Newton for her 10 years of service to the district. Faith is someone who has always been approachable to educators in Red Clay, answering phone calls, meeting us for coffees at Panera. Um, always being there for us, whether we always agree or disagree, she is someone who was completely and totally accessible. Um, you know, congratulations, Faith, on 10 years really well served. I wish you the best of luck, you and Steve, on your move to the beach. And I, 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 hope, to, uh, I hope to keep in touch with you. Good luck. Congrats. Um, I'm also going to speak uh, urging the school board to vote to approve contract negotiations. Um, it's been a few years since we've been at the table. Neither side gets everything that it wants, but we feel that this round of negotiations moves us closer to where we know we need to be as professionals and educators. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will be approved tonight. Um, one final thing, a little more controversial is, I'm really gonna push the board to be more public with where it stands on matters of race, racism, um, culture of white supremacy. Um, what we are seeing over the last few months is a complete takeover of school board meetings around the country by right wing ideologues who are showing up, shouting down school boards, telling them that their schools should not be teaching something called critical race theory. Um, I want our district to be prepared because states and school boards across the country are reacting to these individuals who quite frankly don't know what they're talking about and urging schools to ban teachers from being allowed to talk about critical issues that are impacting our schools, our students and our community. I know that the diversity committee is doing some great work here, but I would really like our board as uh, the elected governance of our body to not be afraid to make very public statements of support for the continued education on tough, challenging conversations that seek to disrupt the comfort of some in the majority. Um, that is why, you know, education history is not always comfortable. It's disturbing. We have to teach the truth. And these movements by some organizations to restrict what we teach in our schools, I'm not saying it's happening here in Red Clay, it's not. But this school board needs to be prepared and you need to start having these conversations now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. And that concludes public comment. So we move on to the approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes from the May 12, 2021 executive session? So moved, Ashley Sabo. Second. Second, Jason Casper. Any any comments? If not, we'll take a roll call vote for you, please. Dr. Bow? Yes. 
Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sable? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Thank you, Maria. And now do I have a motion to accept the May 12, 2021 minutes from our regular session? So move. Mr. Wilson moves, is there a second? Second, second. Jose Matthews. Say both second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bone? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Okay, we now, thank you, Maria. We now move on to the action items. And the first action item is on the school board calendar and meeting location. So it's a recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the school board meetings calendar and locations for the 2021-2022 school year as submitted. Is there a motion? So moved. Ms. Sabo moves. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Casper seconds. Any discussion? I just had a question about why the change in the schools. And so and discussion and hearing um, from, from our public and actually seeing that many within our community continue to benefit from the virtual setup in anticipation of um, approved legislation. Uh, Richardson Park gives the technology platform a, a, a better opportunity to continue in a virtual manner. Um, so we wanted to kind of get ahead of it and not kind of be reactive. And so there's been a lot of investment in Richardson Park's auditorium. And so it lends itself for us to showcase another school, but more importantly host at a different site that could manage the capability so we won't be at CAD for every board meeting. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing none, Maria will take a roll call vote, please. Dr. Bone? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Thank you. Now the second, the next action item is on the CAD Fund Board Acknowledgement. It is the recommendation that the Red Clay or the Board of Education acknowledge that the CAD Fund Board, a 501c3 organization runs camps at Red Clay facilities that are consistent with their mission. Uh, these camps benefit students in the community and further the mission of the CAD Fund. Is there a motion? So moved. Ms. Sabo moves, is there a second? Second. Second, Jose second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, we will take a roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson. Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Okay, the next action item is on the custodial scale increase. And so the custodial staff were the first to ratify their, their contract and then going back and really looking at equity across the board. Um, we wanted to provide them with you know, equitable um, support in terms of their custodial scale. And so it is the recommendation that the Red Clay School Board of Education approve the custodial scale increase for FY 2021 as discussed in executive. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Wilson moves. Is there a second? Dr. Dr. Bone second. Dr. Bone seconds. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bone? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. The next action item is an administrator, administrative appointment. It is the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve Sean Snyder as the manager of assessment and instruction effectively July 1, 2021 as submitted. Salary is commensurate upon the administrative salary schedule. Is there a motion? So moved. Ms. Sabo moves, is there a second? Second, Jose Matthews. Second. Mr. Matthews, second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Maria will take a roll call vote, please. Dr. Bone? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. 
Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Congratulations. Congratulations to Mr. Snyder, who will move from the supervisor of Unified Arts to the manager of assessment and instruction. Congratulations to Mr. Snyder. The next action item is another administrative appointment. It is a recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve Dr. Julie Giandulio as the supervisor of social, emotional, and behavior supports effective July 1, 2021, as submitted. Salary is commensurate upon administrative salary. Is there a motion? So move. Mr. Wilson moves. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Sabo seconds. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, we will take a roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Congratulations to Dr. Gian Julia. Gian Julia. <laughs> and she is coming by way of Capital School District in Dover. Um, sends her regards. She wanted to be here this evening, but she is taking a much needed vacation, of course. We all would love to do after the year that we've lived, but she is excited to join the Red team. Next action item is another administrative appointment. It is the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve Dr. Aaron DeCastro. Um, as the director of school supports effective July 1, 2021 is submitted. Again, salary is commensurate with the administrative salary spend. Is there a motion? So moved. Ms. Sabo moves. Is there a second? Second. Dr. Newton, second. Newton, second. Is there any discussion? It's not a discussion. It's just a comment. Erin has been my daughter's principal for six years. She was incredible with everything we needed for Anna. I appreciate her sticking around until Anna graduated elementary school. She has been great for Lucy as well. And I know that she's gonna do it just a wonderful job for the district in this job as well. Any other comments? Okay, we will take a roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Congratulations, Dr. DeCastro. <laughs> Next action item is the paraprofessional contract. It is the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the paraprofessional contract effective July 1, 2021 through July 30th, 2023, as discussed in the exec session. Is there a motion? Dr. So Bohm, yes. Ms. Sabo moves. Is there a second? Dr. Bohm seconds. Dr. Bohm seconds. Any discussion? Okay, we will, hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, the next action item is the teacher contract. It is a recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the teacher contract effective July 1, 2021 through July 30th, 2023, as discussed in executive session. Is there a motion? So Dr. moved. Dr. Bohm. Wilson moves. Is there a Board second? Second, Dr. Bohm. Dr. Bohm seconds. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, we will take a roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? He's gone. Mr. Matthews recused himself. Or he's muted. Ms. Stevens. He's recused from voting. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? And I am also recused. Maria, please. So five yes, two recused, motion passes. The next action item is vacation carryover for 2020-2021. It is the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the carryover of five additional days of vacation for 12 month employees pursuant to requirements established in House Bill number 105, section 351. Is there a motion? So move, Dr. Bohm. Dr. Bohm moves, is there a second? 
Second. Ms. Sabo seconds. Is there any discussion? Okay. Um, hearing none, Ms. Uh, Maria will take a roll call vote, please. Dr. Bone? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. Thank you. And then last uh, action item is a donation. It is the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the donation of Ritchie Elementary School in the amount of $1,000 from gardening know-how as submitted. Is there a motion? So moved. Ms. Sabo moves. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Casper seconds. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, we will have a roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bone? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote, motion carries. And thank you to Garden Know How. Very much. Well, we greatly appreciate it. So um, the next uh, is the consent agenda. So there is an approval of the consent items. And it's the recommendation that the Red Clay Board of Education approve the action consent items A to C as submitted. Is there a motion? So moved. Ms. Sabo moves. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Casper seconds. We will have a roll call vote, please, Maria. Dr. Bohm? Yes. Mr. Casper? Yes. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Dr. Newton? Yes. Ms. Sabo? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Thompson? Yes. Unanimous vote. Motion carries. Thank you, Maria. Mm -hmm. Now we move on to the superintendent's report. And so Mr. Green, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you to our board. Um, thank you to the community, our school leaders, educators. Um, it's actually difficult to put in words the year that we've all had to live. But the first um, thing on my report is actually the fact that we were able to celebrate and acknowledge the class of 2021 in person. And I think it was a, a fitting testament and testimony um, to the trying year that we all live, but the fact that now we find ourselves in a much better position than we were last year, um, holding virtual graduation. So to date, we've held seven graduations, starting with First State School, which kicked off here. Um, we had CAB, which was an outdoor graduation um, here at CAB. And then on Saturday, June 5th, we hosted um, at the 76th, the Chase, 76 years field house, um, AI High School, McCain, the John Dickinson School, and Conrad School of Science. I wanna thank Mr. Golder. I wanna thank our building teams, administrators, graduation coordinators, um, all of those who worked diligently to ensure, again, that the class of 2021 had a fitting send off. Uh, thank you to all of our families as well. Um, again, for our senior classes and also for those who have transitioned, our middle schools have had their various move up ceremonies, as well as our fifth grade promotion and move up ceremonies and preschool program. And so there were a lot of ceremonies across the board, understanding that again, we're still coming out of, again, as I indicated in my speeches, the haze known as COVID-19 back to whatever this new normal we're all working to define. Um, and as Taylor shared with the, the celebrations, uh, earlier, you know, in spite of it all, there were plenty of wonderful things happening in and about our community. And again, that's just a testament to the men and women, our custodial crews, support staff, school nutrition, transportation workers, um, community partners and all who, who helped us get through this year. So again, congratulations to the class of 2021. We're excited about what you're going to do and the fact that you will come back uh, to Red Clay, hopefully, um, but more importantly, you'll be uh, contributing members to a society wherever your destination uh, ends up being. So thank you again to, to all of those who made the class of 2021 um, a special send off. We also want to acknowledge Mr. Matthew Marion, who is Red Clay's 2022 uh, Teacher of the Year. Um, it is an incredible honor, according to Mr. Marion, um, to receive this recognition. He does have big shoes to fill, as he indicated. Uh, Ms. Shayla Perkins, who was initially announced 
as the 2022 Teacher of the Year um, from Stanton Middle School, ended up taking an opportunity out of state. And so Mr. Marion will represent Red Clay as our 2022 Teacher of the Year. Um, Mr. Marion is in his eighth year teaching uh, music at Linda Hill Elementary. He began teaching at, the Linda, at Linda Hill after graduating uh, from the University of Delaware with a bachelor's in music and music education. Uh, he has a lifelong passion for music. And so and Mr. Marion enjoys bringing that love for music to his school community. In addition to teaching music classes with students in the kindergarten through fifth grade, he teaches chorus, directs musical theater programs, and organizes frequent performances across the community. Uh, Mr. Marion is always looking for ways to foster a love for music and his students upon entering the music room, you can expect to be greeted with the sound of ukuleles, drums, pianos, and other instruments. And so congratulations uh, to Mr. Marion. Uh, best wishes to Ms. Perkins as she travels, um, again, out of state, wonderful teacher. And again, couldn't be more fitting that we actually had double teachers of the year this year, but proud that Mr. Marion will be representing uh, Delaware, now moving on to the state. Uh, we also had the opportunity in the season of celebrations to celebrate our retirees. Uh, we had a unique opportunity to extend the honor to both the 1920 retirees, which were 65 uh, of our former employees who retired in the 1920 school year, and then 72 uh, who retired during the 2021 school year. And so the 137 total retirees over the two year period of time. Uh, we invited them to an intimate reception for the retirees only, understanding that we're still, you know, under, we're under the restrictions. Um, and so for those who did attend, it was a wonderful opportunity. Thank you to our HR department, uh, Chris Smith and others for, you know, having the, the foresight to not only recognize this year's retirees for their hard work, dedication, commitment and effort to Red Clay, but last year's as well. Um, so again, to our retirees, thank you for your years of service to the Red Clay schools, students, families, and community at large. Uh, we wish you all well um, and a fulfilled life as you live out your dreams and goals and retirement. Even if I am managing me and Dr. Marsh. <laughs> and I think more so than anything over the course of this year, um, you know, it's, it's been a, a, a trying year, but through it all, the resilience of our community. Um, has, has shown through. And so on May 17th, um, the state acknowledged Brown versus Board of Education Day at the Hokesson School 107, which sits in Hokesson. And we had the opportunity to have students from AI DuPont uh, High School, as well as HB DuPont Middle School um, join in that day. And we commemorated the day with a walk that Shirley Bueller would take to school, which was a two mile walk. And so students participated in that walk um, and there's just a brief video that we just want to show the community that kind of highlights not only the historical context of where we find ourselves, but the rich diversity that our students and our community bring to Red It's their anniversary. And on today, we decided to take a journey. And this journey was to walk the life of Shirley Bula on her way to school and experience some of the obstacles that she experienced.
morning, everyone, and welcome. You hit certain moments in life where you're at a loss for words, and to see all of you here today coming out to celebrate this monumental moment in our nation's history and in our state's history is just incredibly exciting. Uh, on behalf of the board of the Friends of Hocassin Colored School, number 107, I'm David Wilk. I would like to welcome all of you here with our warmest regards. We're excited to be here today as part of the Red Lake Consolidated School District Parent Students from Ancient Japan, as well as AI High School, you know, represent our district so fitted in the legacy of Shirley Buell. So again, we look forward to, to the work that's coming out of our Diversity, Equity, uh, Inclusion Office, Equity and Strategic Partnership with Dr. Kamanda Bond. Um, and again, many more efforts going forward so that this current generation does not have to relive the history of the past. It is a hard time to walk in on two miles, but I've seen what she had to go through, and nobody should have to go through that. I don't know how she did that for six years, but I've been able to do we have one student from HP DuPont that would like to just share one last reflection before we go. I speak on behalf of the HP students when I say that we are truly honored to be here celebrating this historical moment with all of you on the 67th anniversary of the Brown versus Board of Education decision. As stated by Cesar Cassini, strong people stand for themselves, but stronger people stand for others. Today and every day, we must recognize the efforts and sacrifices strong people have made to make the world a better place. Let us remember when Shirley Bula endured her two mile journey to school each day so she can get education. Let us remember when Chancellor Collins Sykes stood up for equality, and let us remember when Lewis Bennett fought for civil rights for all people. Thank you. So again, thank you to the leadership at both of our schools, uh, the work that Dr. Bond is doing, but again, our community as a whole. Um, you know, we, we are a rich, diverse community. Um, we look forward to continuing to embrace that, uh, but more importantly, supporting our students so that they continue to have a voice in the work that we do because they see the world in a much different way than we see the world. And so we will continue to engage our students and keep them at the forefront of, of again, the work that we're doing here in Red Clay. And with that being said, I want to share a program in partnership with the other Newcastle County School Districts. Um, Red Clay is joining neighbor districts and charter schools to give rising seniors of the class of 2023, um, or excuse me, 2022, what we call Boost 22. Um, Boost 22 is a program that will enhance um, existing district programs to help more students remain in school and on track to graduate uh, on time with the class of 2022. Again, being focused that a lot of our students have found themselves um, in a remote learning environment, looking to how we're gonna re-engage with our schools. And so in partnership with um, the other Newcastle County School Districts, you know, we're, we're collaborating on partnerships and resource allocation to be able to ensure that none of the rising seniors fall through the cracks, whether that would be academically, social, emotionally, um, and this is for students in Wilmington in particular. You know, if you look at students who reside in the city of Wilmington, you, know, you can live on one side of the street and, you know, be in red clay and literally move across the other side and end up in Brandywine or in Christine. And a lot of those barriers, um, especially now in this post-COVID environment, um, really can impede a graduate's ability to graduate. And so, you know, our goal as partners um, within Newcastle County is to coordinate of resources among the five school districts along with Theory Charter. And I believe Great Oaks is another charter school that we will be working with us um, to increase pandemic related student engagement, uh, partner with research-based dropout prevention programs and expand access and opportunities to accelerate learning uh, in preparation for post-secondary success. And again, I wanna thank Mr. Golder and our secondary school counselors who have already started to conduct junior transcript audits to really identify that pocket of students here in Red Clay who we will work to support. And again, that doesn't mean we're not supporting the remainder of the student population in our district, but knowing the tough road to hoe that many of our students have had. And I can just speak personally, having a rising senior, 
who has been remote for part of the year, um, there's been a, just a different level of engagement. And so really re-engaging our students, you know, simple things is getting up and putting on clothes. <laughs> it's just something that we might take for granted or just minimize, but I think that's the reality that a lot of our young people find themselves in. So that idea of reacclimating them to school um, and not everyone has the supports at home. So again, this is a collaboration and partnership with other Newcastle County School Districts. Uh, this is just a general health, day, health update. Um, effective to get day for the governor's orders, but beginning tomorrow, um, effectively here in Red Clay. Um, the following health and safety protocols will be in place in Red Clay when students are not in the building. And that's the idea of requiring face coverings um, as it relates to admin memo um, 5012.11. When students are not present in the building, staff may remove their face coverings. Um, while on Red Clay property, staff, are not staff who are not vaccinated, excuse me, are encouraged to wear the mask or wear face covering when around others. Um, if outside, face coverings are not required to be worn. Um, expectations around social distancing remain unchanged, however. Uh, if deemed a close contact by the Department of Health, quarantine measures still apply. So we just need to be mindful of that. Um, the Department of Health, while they say that you know, summer school programming and students can be seated you know, three feet apart, if they deem us or you six feet, um, within six feet over that 15 minute period of time, their quarantine measures still apply. Um, but again, for the governor's latest order, um, we are adhering to that. And so when students are not present in the building, the decision to wear face covering is a personal decision. Staff who are vaccinated may elect to wear face covering based on their individual circumstances. Staff who are not vaccinated, again, are encouraged to continue to wear face coverings. This has been a trying year for all of us. And so what we're simply asking um, is that mutual respect is granted when, when dealing with this topic. Again, we see what's happening across the, 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 the country, across the nation in terms of if you have one on, if you don't have one, the stigma that's associated with it. We're a community, let's be a community, let's get through it together and again, just have that mutual respect and understanding that it is a personal prerogative uh, for those individuals who either choose to wear one or for those who are vaccinated who choose not to wear one. And as a district, you know, we'll continue to encourage participation in the COVID-19 vaccination program. Anyone with questions regarding the COVID-19 vaccination program are encouraged to discuss their individual circumstances with their primary care physician. Um, and again, please note that um, guidance about summer programs and the upcoming 2021-2022 school year uh, will be forthcoming. Again, based on the governor's latest order, the executive order will be lifted on July 13th. Um, and so we're still waiting to determine what does that mean for us as a school district around the social distancing requirements, because if we're still three feet apart, if there's still limitations, um, it still impedes our ability to bring everyone back in the same manner in which we were pre-COVID. And so we're still waiting on that guidance. What we're hearing from the state is that they're waiting for CDC um, updates in reference to school specific guidance. So we're somewhat still in the holder pattern, but there is reprieve based on the latest orders that we are hearing to and following. Um, and again, we're just asking for mutual respect within our community. Uh, today, we actually ho hosted um, along with the district and our school nurses partnered with um, Dr. Uh, Sue Romani, um, who's the MD and CEO of Careport MD. Uh, to host a vaccination clinic at the John Dickinson School for Delaware residents age 12 and older. Um, and we were happy that over 300 of our community members uh, did receive the vaccination through that clinic. Um, and Dr. Summit Superman is a Red Clay alumnus. And so when you look at a CEO and looking at, again, the proof is in the pudding, as they say, that a doctor who created the, the mobile vaccination clinic and vaccinated over tens of thousands of individuals um, and not only that, but treated them in COVID tests and various things throughout the state, graduated from Red Clay and the Red Clay number. So I mean, another point of pride that a Red Clay education is paying off in the community. And then in closing, and I do um, want to be mindful, and I will update this because we switched the date. Um, our summer programmings will begin on 628, if I'm correct, not 624 as I have in my report. Um, so that is a typo. The programs will begin on 628, not 624. 
I believe staffing, programming, and development will actually start on the 624. Um, but for students for our 12 month programming, which is our ESY autism programming, our early years program will begin on June 28th. Correct, Dr. Sellison, and not the 24th. So I will uh, um, update that. And then our K-8 summer online programming runs from July 1st through July 30th, and that's for K-8. And anyone who um, you will have access um, to online services through um, ClassLink after that period of time. And then again, enrichment and other programming uh, will be uh, available to our community um, through the Office of Equity and Strategic Partnerships. Again, the work that Dr. Tawanda Bond is doing with a host of partners. We have the Campus Connect Initiative um, for students entering grades one through five. Um, the program aims to strengthen students' reading skills and ignite their interest in STEM. Um, so it is a lot of enrichment-based activities and opportunities. Um, the program, again, will encourage students to see themselves as scientists, technicians, engineers, mathematicians, uh, and we will help students explore and solve real-world challenges. Children will receive breakfast and lunch uh, during these camp hours, and Campus Connect will be held at Warner Elementary, uh, and we'll run through Monday through Thursday, starting June 28th. Thanks, Dr. Bond, for that, through July 27th, uh, and students will have all on the 5th for July 4th holiday. In addition to that, we have the Springboard, uh, Spring into Learning Summer Enrichment Program. We have our FAME program, which will be all virtual. And then many of our other schools are um, hosting various summer programs. Our high school secondary buildings in August will have um, somewhat of school restart boot camps to help students transition and get reacclimated. Um, we're, we're, we're taking a big bite of the summer apple. Uh, with that being said, um, we have a lot of our staff members who are looking for a summer respite, can't blame them. And, you know, and so as we're looking for uh, nurses and additional staff support, um, so be on the lookout, especially within our ESY 12-month um, programming, um, there still may be a need for staffing and that's just not a rectally specific issue. We know many of our neighboring school districts as well. Um, again, after the year that all of our educators had to endure, many are just looking forward to that break. Um, but again, we're trying to stand up as many programs as we can to continue to support students and families with learning recovery, learning acceleration over the summer. So in conclusion, I, again, I wanna thank everyone. I can't say it enough, um, you know, since March 12th of whenever that first announcement to close schools happened, there have been routine 16, 17 hour days for myself. Um, that being said, the work is no less rewarding because of the amazing students and children that we have, the amazing families that we have, and more importantly, the dedicated educators, support staff, custodial staff. Um, people will always say, man, you, you, you picked the right, a good time to become a superintendent. And, and I tell everyone, I didn't pick it, it chose me, but there wouldn't have been a better district to have to go through this experience with than, than being here in Red Clay. So thank you to the board, but more importantly, thank you to all of our educators, our paraprofessionals, our front office staff, again, knowing everyone had a very different lived experience with this pandemic. And we truly were living through a pandemic and we can't minimize that, but I can't thank our staff enough. So thank you to everyone throughout Red Clay for the wonderful school year we had in spite of a pandemic. And we're looking forward to brighter days come 2021, 2022 school year. So thank you so much. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Green. Any questions or comments for Mr. Green? And I just want to say, Dr. Newton, thank you. Again, no, just going through a, a, a lifelong career as an educator, but then to turn around and serve a decade on a school board is just a testament to your commitment to children. And so your legacy will continue throughout as you know, educators that you've impacted, students that you've impacted come into our system. So thank you for your, your dedication and your years of service as well. You're welcome. Thank you. Enjoy your retirement. When you get to comments, or I want some, I do want I'm some. I'm getting, I'm getting okay. them all. So um, what school board members have, we're gonna get to items submitted by the board. So who has anything? I take it that Dr. Newton does. I do. Mr. Wilson? President Thompson, I have some as well. Is that you, Mr. Matthews? I couldn't hear you. Yes, yep, it, that's, this is- We can't hear you for some reason. Anybody else? I do, Dr. Bohm. Okay. 
Anybody else? Okay. So why don't you start, Dr. Newton, since you were first? I'll be short. You know me. <laughs> I know yeah. I'm not on this 15 minute plan. Let me start by thanking Representative Smith and Representative Williams for your kind words and for the House of Representative tribute. That was very thoughtful of you and I appreciate it. And yes, Kim, I do remember that first meeting in the cafeteria where everyone was screaming at me, um, but it worked out very well um, and it, went, it, it was good. Um, thank you to the board for the flowers and all the administrative staff. I don't know who did the organ organizing up here, but I really appreciated it. Um, 10 years ago, I stood here to be sworn in for my first term on the board, but my relationship, as you well know, goes with Greg Clay, goes much further back and deeper than that. I started in the district as a principal of Stanton Middle School in 97. That was 24 years ago, and that's really hard for me to believe. In 2000, I went into the district office where I stayed until I had the first of many back surgeries that, first, that forced me into temporary disability retirement. My older daughter graduated from McCain in 2003. My twins went from Brandywine Springs to HB DuPont and then Charter and they graduated in 2014. My grandson went to Linden Hill and graduated from McCain, or McCain graduated from Conrad two weeks ago. During my, red, during my relationship with the Red Clay Consolidated School District at every level of employment and engagement, I've tried to be guided by one simple principle. What is best for our kids? Everybody sitting up here on the board, I truly believe, along with the administrators, the teachers, the staff members, the students and parents throughout the district, believes in what's best for our children. Even though we may have different ideas about what that may look like, sometimes we find consensus easily, other times we have to work through a process, and sometimes we have to agree to disagree and take the best possible choice available to us at that time. My memories are not tied to programs or to referendum or to headlines, but they're tied to people. I can't even begin to list the people without breaking down or leaving out somebody important. So I'm not even going to start. Besides a complete list of the amazing, talented, caring people I've worked with over the years would extend way too long for any public comment. I do wanna thank both superintendents with whom I've worked, Merv and Darrell. Darrell, you've done an amazing job. And I can't even begin, there are no words to express what you've done since you've been here. Who in their ways have done so much to shape Delaware's largest and most innovative school district. I also wanna thank the other members of the board, those who are still here and those like me who have the issue of when it's time to go. It was a very difficult decision. We have sometimes been united and other times been divided. We engage in powerful debates and we have sometimes left our passion right year for everyone to see. We aren't perfect by a long shot. Certainly COVID-19 gave every board member, every administrator, and every teacher in America a wake-up call about the things we take for granted, about the ways in which our students depend on us that we sometimes barely even notice. But those teachers and those students and their parents at the end of the year, we did it. And I can assure you that in years to come, you will hear stories about 2021 about the teacher that I wouldn't have made it without the school year if that teacher hadn't done this. And that's what we need to remember. It's time, after 24 years being associated with the district, a decade on the board, and all my children, and even the grandchild out of the system, it's time for me to move on. And I actually forgot about one of them. I forgot my, the, the uh, niece that we took in for two years that graduated from Conrad. So I put five through the system. Um, you will not see the last of me. I'm still preparing new teachers for Delaware State University. I'm still going to send them to Red Clay for early field experience, student teaching, and hopefully to be hired. Get them in our classrooms where they will do great jobs. As stressful as this position has sometimes been, it's also a remarkably difficult to walk away from. A career long labor of love. I love what I'm doing. Thank you for everything that you have done, are doing, and will continue to do for our future students and for all the many kindnesses that have been shown to me and my family along the way. God bless you and have a wonderful time. You okay. Want to go next, Mr. Wilson? No problem. Okay. Faith, it's been a pleasure and a privilege to work with you. 
Dr. Faith Newman. Throughout my time on this board, her wealth of knowledge and passion for all kids will be deeply missed. Thank you and God bless you in your future endeavors. Much love, the Wilsons. Thanks, Martin. Do you want to go next, Mr. Matthews? It's you, Dr. Bowman, me, so I'm okay with whatever order people want to do. Absolutely. No, I can certainly go. Um, before I start my comments, I would also like to thank Dr. Newton. Um, as Dr. Newton knows, uh, you hold a special place in the Matthews family and in, in our household. So thank you so much for your service and your dedication to our district. I also have a couple of updates. So um, since this is item submitted by the board, I have a facilities committee update. So the facilities committee received an overview of the initial draft of, the, of a year long facilities assessment. I wanted to give a special thanks to the building principals and maintenance staff who spent their time working with the architects and engineers. Um, the assessment that was provided an overview at the last meeting identified over 500 million in deferred maintenance and capital improvements. And um, we are working on this assessment, making sure it's refined, um, making sure we're looking at our priorities. And we're gonna be preparing for a board workshop in July, um, just in terms of dates for that workshop. Um, it's going to be the last week of July and the district is working on solidifying that date and, and, and posting it publicly so that the community is also aware and involved. Um, so the outcome of this is gonna be the certificate of necessity, which is due to DOE by August 31st. Um, so there's a lot to look at there. In terms of the next facility committee's meeting, um, this date has not been yet approved by the board, but tentatively it's going to be September 13th for those to mark their calendar. So board workshop, end of July, next meeting, September 13th. Um, so please, for those who are interested in this work in the community, please look out for that date on our public notices uh, page. And um, at the next meeting, I will also provide a reminder uh, for when the board workshop and that date has been solidified. Um, I also wanted to say thank you to all of those who helped coordinate phenomenal graduations um, over the last few weeks. Uh, we still have one more graduation to go, but the graduations that we've had, um, and I've, tended, I've, I've attended all of them thus far, but the graduations we have had have been phenomenal and incredible and just the way we've been able to really honor our students uh, really means a lot to me. I know it means a lot to the parents, the students and the community um, because last year we were hit so devastatingly with the pandemic. Um, and that is the conclusion of my report. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. A little feedback there. So Dr. Bohm, either you go or I'll go. It doesn't matter if you wanna go last, that's fine with me. What's your preference? You're on mute. You're on mute. You're, you're, it's fine if you would like to go next. Okay, so I'll go next. Um, and I have two items that I wanna talk about. One of course is again, thank you to Faith. As you mentioned, being a board member is tough at times. We get a lot of community input. We have to vote and take public positions on, on issues. And we know we will not make everyone happy. And it is really challenging sometimes. We have to listen to everybody, welcome the comments, but need to listen to everybody, kind of take it in. We often kind of get sideways with ourselves, uh, amongst ourselves, and that proves to be very challenging. We got to put in a fair, we have to publicly state our views. We have to put in a fair amount of work, at least I do, to understand the district and to set priorities. But faith has been a constant over the past 10 years, exceedingly knowledgeable about red clay, always willing to candidly state her thoughts and opinions which carry great weight. Faith can cut through to the core of an issue quickly and decisively and very, very directly, which I really appreciate because I can hear it. I will definitely miss your knowledge, your wisdom, your candor, and your unflinching ability to cut through to the core of any big issue. I wish you the best of luck and plan to stay in touch whether here or at the beach. So thank you very much for all the, the help you've given me. You know, from time to time I've called you to help. I need, I need help, I need to understand this. 
and you've always been there, so thank you. You're welcome. The next thing I would like our board to consider, uh, or, and I'd like to get district input on this, but I, I, I know that one of our big issues that we need to deal with is student achievement. I know we're starting to get the data and deal with that. But I think one thing that feeds into that that the board may not directly be involved in is the curriculum, curriculum and obliga our obligations on the curriculum committee. So I know there's an administrative memo on curriculums, but there's not really board input into it. And I'd really like to see some kind of perhaps board committee or something where we deal with curriculum. So I'd like to put that on the agenda for next month. Okay. And with that, I'm done. So Dr. Bohm, the floor is yours. So I'm just going to take a moment to do all my items now. And the first thing I wanted to say is that I do have an information item that I'm presenting tonight that will be voted on next month. And it is to continue with the hybrid option for school board meetings. So that would allow participants to um, participate and engage in the meetings virtually and also in person. And that would include allowing members of the community to submit their green slips virtually and to make public comment virtually. So we'll vote on that next month. And I have raised that issue, I think about six times over the past year. The second thing I wanted to talk about was, um, I do not have any committee reports because all the committees I'm on, they're not, they're not meeting anymore. But I did want to say that for the May 18th meeting, I did provide public comment on a number of legislative bills. So I spoke publicly on behalf of SB 82, HB 128, and HB 198. And today I provided written comments for SB 82. So there are a lot of really important educational bills that are coming out of the House and the Senate. And I think it's very important that as school board members, we get involved. So I appreciated the opportunity to make those public comments over the last month. The next thing I wanted to talk about was um, <laughs> I wanted to say to Dr. Marshall, congratulations on retirement. I know that the very first time we met, it was quite a boisterous event. And I'll put quotes around that. And I have come to truly appreciate her brilliance and her leadership and her way with numbers and data. And I just want to say thank you and that you will dearly be missed. The last thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that June is Pride Month. And I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. So June is Pride Month and that honors the history, accomplishments and visibility of the LGBTQ plus community. This month is chosen because it commemorates the Stonewall riots which began on June 28, 1969. The Stonewall riots were a pivotal part of the gay rights movement because they sent a powerful message that the community was not only prepared to fight back, but was willing to fight, fight back with stones and with bats and with pure people resistance against the unjust treatment that they experienced at the hands of law enforcement and other social institutions, including our educational arena. So to honor Pride Month, one of the things I would like to say is that I really appreciate that Mr. Matthews has asked the district to create a trans student policy. And I wanted to know if now, during Pride Month, the board could have an update on the progress of that policy. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So we now, um, there are information items which are listed. And if there's no one else that wants to say anything, I would ask for a motion. Yeah, and before we motion to adjourn, I did want to acknowledge Ms. Gibbs who is in here on behalf of the pairs. Um, I'm not sure who I, it's hard to see, but I know I saw Ms. Gibbs back there. So I just want to acknowledge as you guys approve ratification of the pair contract and she's here representing the pairs group. So thank you for being here, Ms. Gibbs. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? Well, be, before Don't we adjourn, Dr. Is, moves. is there a second? Adjourn, is there a way we can have an update on the trans student policy? Dr. Brumall, if you want to come down. We didn't hear that, Dr. Brown. Apologize. <clears throat> Good
Good evening. Um, the transgender policy was sent to a subcommittee led by Dr. Bowen and our diversity team. They've had two meetings. They have some tasks to complete over the summer, and we'll have an update in the fall. Thank, Thank you. you. And Dr. Bond, if you had any specific, uh, Bone, any specific questions, feel free, again, with regards to those particular subcommittees and work groups to funnel them to Dr. Bond um, for specific answers. Okay, so Dr. Newton moved to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Sabo second. And I think we can do this by roll, without a roll call. We can just do this by voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There are none. So thank you, everyone, and, and have a wonderful summer. Thank you again for the all your work during the school year. And congratulations to our new members. Everyone have a wonderful summer. Thank you for being here. Have a great night. Good night.